as HK clearly does not want to play it. We still have... And the Ash. All right, Ash they are changing it up for the bottom. Okay. okay, I mean, then Sivir obviously goes, goes up in priority. They're an old pick for Forgiven, like Tristana. There's Lucian. If you want to play purely around bot lane and try and stomp the early game, Lucian is actually an option for Forgiven. Zyra here could be a good choice for Matrix. The problem is MF is available. Again, it's not banned this time around. So if they pick the Zyra, they expect the MF to come in as the answer. And they couldn't really deal with it in the first game. No, they couldn't. So what does HTK do this time around? The top lane pool open for business. Odo could also go for that Jace if he wanted to, but a lot of options, a lot of counters into that as well. Yeah, and the thing is, I like dropping that MF uh, ban. I don't think you need to do it. If, if you're expecting them to play the MF, hold on to your support pick. It's not as big of a deal if you get something like Nami. If you have sustain in lane, if you have Nami, I think you would be a lot better than if you, you know, you had Zyra and you were vulnerable and you weren't able to end your skills, uh, land your skill shots. But if you're Samsung, you can just go Zyra yourself because HK banned MF last game. We haven't seen them play it, obviously. They haven't had a chance to really show it. The Vander MF, though. You can just take the gamble if you're Samsung. Go Zyra here and say, are you playing MF? If not, well, then we have a strong lane set up already, and you have to go Karma again. I do agree, because they've got extra games in the series that they can yeah. earn here. HDK are backs against the walls there. Pick must Zyra. win give from it here me. on out. Give it to me right here, unless you're looking for something like Jace. Don't give it to like him. Like we saw in the last <laughs> game. Come on, Sam, I'll give it to him. Get that Zyra as well. Let's see if so Vander thirsty actually plays for the Zyra. No! <laughs> Lock it in! Do it! He's gonna swap it on. No, he's not. That's it. All right, Golden give me stone. Now give me the wind speakers on it to top it. <laughs> Send that message again. I don't even need Thunderlords to win this bot lane. Can Vanda play MF? One thing we did uh, going back, uh, at one point, Ambition did have a needlessly large rod as well, as far as you know, messages being sent in that <laughs> last game. I do like the fun that the players are also having with their flares in game. Yeah, I think Samsung is having fun. I'm not sure HK is having a lot of fun. They're smiling, look at that. Yeah, I've been having now. some fun with the wave around the crowd. Yeah, props to production for catching that one. HTK hovering the karma. They're not going to go for the misfortune yet. Still 20 seconds to go. Uh, what is the options here for Yankos? Most as well. Most likely Lee's coming in Lee's, for him. Lee's already banned. Lee's so. in his ban, so you can't go for that one. You can take at least if you want the early game impact. Take that with the command, save your top lane for later. Seems to be the go-to choice for H2K here. Now you would be thinking an AD top, right? Since But I like Samsung's comp so much. Like, Samsung has such a good composition with the first three picks. You get the best available support in the bot lane. Against a guy who doesn't play MF, you get Victor the main champion for your superstar mid lane. Also, if they lock this Poppy in, I really like the Poppy into Jace matchup, actually. And I think that would be kind of a blocker, even if Odo Omne now wants to balance out their damage and go with the Jace top. And that's where Odo Omne pulls out an old classic into Trundle. We have seen it a few blood, times. Blood. It makes you win that split push. It's good against Poppy. Or he's a little bit boring. He just goes Gnar, which also can win the matchup. He needs something where he's the man who scales away from QV, and he can actually win that split push late game because Samsung has been playing around this 1-4 setup so, so well. All right, well, let's see if Odo Wamne and HTK agree with you, Deficio. The team composition closed out. Ezreal and Poppy for Samsung Galaxy. They've got a good mixture of really everything. Disengage, re-engage. The crowd is trying to say he's 2 k but they're kind of misspelling <laughs> it here. But really, I mean, we're looking at something like, again, Nartron. These kind of picks that can actually uh, do well against Poppy and be especially stronger also when it comes to split push later with something like Black Cleaver for one of them, obviously going Hydra on the other one. And it would be some evolution for H2K if they went that route because Prolly and H2K have been notoriously defiant of changing their ways in series. There Eventually it is. losing do it, to Splice. Now. 10 seconds on the clock. Give me that Trundle. And there it's locked in. Thank Trundle, you there is some scaling and some split push if Odo can play it well. And there is a huge speed advantage here for H2K. Uh, not only could the four-man squad you rely on Sivir and Karma speed boost to try and disengage when they're split pushing, but even if they did get drawn into the five on five, Trundle Pillar uh, really does set up cocoons and you know boomerangs and little harassment as you're using the speed to disengage as well. Meanwhile, you know, Samsung, 
they don't have any of the extra speed boosts that they that they had before. No, but Samsung have an absolutely insane team fight comp where H2K is looking to split up the map and play 1-3-1. Basically play side lanes with Ryze and the Trundle and try and dominate that way, but you can't fall behind early if you want to play 1-3-1 because then everything falls apart. Definitely a lot of weight on Yanko's shoulders once again with this Elise pick. He's shown up in the two previous games. H2K needs to go back to a map style of play that they were actually famous for throughout most of the year. And the coaches meeting on stage for potentially the last time here today in Madison Square Garden. Potentially the last time in New York City. H2K have no room for error. Down 0-2, they need a reverse sweep. They need to find some ability that they've not shown yet this series. And we need to see if they actually want to start playing around the bottom side. They have the champion who can gank. They can go against this Zyra especially, who can't really get away from these opportunities. And Odo Hamna will be fine top lane on this trundle. And they're going to have to pull off that split push, you know, and have attention to detail, especially concerning the warding and the vision. Because as you said, the front line there from Samsung means their team fight is incredibly impressive. Well, Madison Square Garden, you guys were getting loud during picks and bans. Let's crank it up a notch as Samsung Galaxy are one win away from Staples. One win away from the 2016 World Championship Final. There is a Fog of War stream over on Riot Games 2 as well, if anybody's at home watching. And Ryu may find himself a special present, as it looks like Ambition is coming in. He spots it out in the last second, actually throws down the Ghost. Let's get slowed down. Two Brolaf axes catch him, but that's not the end of the world, because that's a pretty short cooldown. Yeah, and Invade was so early, Samsung didn't uh, even place on any wards. Oh, a little bit of damage there onto Vanda. Actually, a lot of damage. Revenge from game one, basically. Samsung getting a few good trades early on, but it's so early that you can still recall and return to lane. It just means you won't get any uh, deeper wards placed. And actually opens up for Samsung to see if they can sneak in one ward, at least on the red buff, to try and spot the path from Yankos. You have to think H2K sniffed that one out. Where's the wind speaker? <laughs> ah, he went Thunderlord. It's on Karma. What a tryhard. Where it belongs. No misclicks this time around. And H2K gonna get their lane assignments. Gonna have some vision. Ambition stood on top of a ward. We know Yankos is gonna get spotted out. And we're gonna have to look at Yankos's pathing because we touched on how impactful Elise can be in the early game. And look what Samsung is doing in the bottom lane to get the early push going. Sitting in front of their own wave, instantly they just queue the wave with Ezreal, they queue the wave with Zyra to get that early advantage and start pushing it to get level 2. Exactly. Wave control is so important in these comps where you're running the double range poking bottom lanes, not giving that wave control over to Sivir. Meanwhile, Odo Omne on the top though, gets his bite in. All right, getting that chomp down. Crowd learning to spell H2K. As they're evolving. There you go. And that's what HDK will need to do this game. And Ryu's going to have to have a much better performance. Going to be outranged by Crown. And going to have a tough time to farm, but currently doing okay in the first two or three ways. <laughs> Hasn't missed uh, a whole lot in the start, but I actually really like Victor against Ryze. Because Ryze is this kind of champion who needs to run at you to really uh, be effective and, and deal proper DPS. Always about moving around, getting position to land these overloads again and again. And Victor is a champion who's really good at kiting because he builds Rylai's, he has a gravity field. It's very easy for him to slow you down and stop you from moving, from running straight at him. And that makes it very effective for Crown to deal with him. Especially with the clan. Ooh, a lot of damage. Crown's down to 100 hit points. Ryu looking, gets the flash. We talk about all the advantages. Ryu's got a flash available. Oh, and the jungler is colliding. Yankos, where's the cocoon? Let the Victor, Victor get his Rylai's. Then we can start seeing the kiting. <laughs> Early on though, good trading from Ryu. That's a good sign if Ryu can keep it up. Did Yanko steal away that red buff? Yes, it looks to be the case. And his blue is still available to be secured as well. So small advantages here for H2K. Well, you got the small monster in the red camp. Red buff did go to Ambition first. Now they're looking to make that move mid lane, but Crown is paying respect there to the possibility of Elise coming from behind him because they last bought him in their own jungle. Good hit from Bander. Getting two members and... Uh... Real getting ganked, as we have seen every single game so far, and forced to use both summoners so, so early, always tilting the matchup in favor of Crown. 
and he's forced back. He will get his tier anyway, so he's, he's not the worst to go back. But the wave is actually in a pretty annoying spot for him, because the wave is slowly but surely pushing towards Crown here. All right, Odoamne is in trouble. Got a gigantic wave in front of him. He needs to survive this. The cost is too high. Pinned against the wall. First blood goes to Ambition. Ambition with the two extremely high value ganks there. Double summoners off of mid. Gets the dive bottom where or top where Odoamne misses out on this huge triple stacked wave. I'm gonna have to use that teleport to get back to lane as well. Try and pick up some of them. So much pressure. Odo Wamne comes back with a cull on his top lane trundle. Loses out a lot of CS and first blood to a rampaging Olaf. Is terrifying. And Odo Wamne is the guy who was supposed to just sit on his own and start outscaling the Poppy, obviously much later on in the game. And that's why it's such a good play early on here from Samsung. Poppy against these melee matchups can push early with a Q and then get this guy on the tower. And because Ambition was full HP, he had a great path towards topside. He can pull off this gank. And we haven't seen Yankos return the favor just yet. He's level four, and it's hard for him to really pick a lane now. No summoners in mid lane from Ryu. Or I'm no flash top lane already slightly behind. It is really difficult as a jungler now to pick a lane. Definitely so. Ambition getting himself ahead very early on here. And this is Samsung beating H2K in the early game where they were given the highest chance to succeed. Yuvay now needs to pick up that shield if he wants to continue the trade. Another good stunt, heroic charge down to Odo. Even with the minion support and heal, Odo comes away worse for wear. And that wave is pushing again. It's locked for Cube, making Odo's life even more risky. And look at the uh, ruler here on Ezra. Goes Sheen first item, skips the tier. We've actually seen this once before from death, where you go for as much power as possible Ooh. early, because you know the lane they want to play around is your lane. So you want to be strong. Call JJ. He's Talk. caught by the cocoon, sinking down. Damage comes out, and Vanda is able to root him with the W. First kill for H2K. They could set up a tower dive. Skill shots cannot afford to miss. Ruler is not going to dodge the cocoon. Exhaust comes out. Kill should be secured here by oh. Forgiveness. It's a trade. And Ruler gets one back in a 3v1. So one for two in the bottom lane here. HJ getting some damage on tower, so it's gonna take a lot of it. Oh, I'm sad for him though, as we've seen time and time again in this series, when one play happens on one side, instantly the enemy jungler is on the other side, ready to make a play in. Poor Omnis getting denied a lot of extra CS. Patience there for Yankos, waiting in the tri bush. Seeing Core JJ roam mid, by the way. They knew he was coming from mid because he had just gone there and cleared out that pink ward. Now he goes for the dive. Uh, he doesn't have the time to wait for Repel to come back up. That's why he flashes here super early. Uh, because he knows Repel is not going to be back up in time. And very quick thinking there for a ruler to go try and capitalize. I wonder if that Sheen proc on the Q helped out get hit hey, that kill. He knew he was going to get <laughs> camped down the bottom. Actually, he didn't know the focus from Extra K would be on bottom side. Again, that's why he wanted more, that impact early on. Last time we saw this build, it was just straight Iceborn Gauntlet. And then after Gauntlet, you actually went tier. So you get super, super late, but you get a bit more power early. Seems to be what he's aiming for this time around. Could also just turn this Mana Crystal into a tier yeah. next time he goes back. Yes, yeah, so it'll depend on how the rest of the lane phase plays out and how this 2v2 matchup goes toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We touched on how important it would be for Vanda on this Karma to show up because he did not go MF into the Zyra, which is what we've learned in semifinals is the counter. So pressure on Vanda to show up as Ryu is now under pressure in the mid lane. Yeah, yep. once again for H2K, it's really hard for him to get every single lane going. It's always one or two lanes struggling, slightly falling behind. Good ganks from Yankos again to try and snowball one of the lanes, but then you can see the rest of the map not really win out on it. Exactly. Ambition has been getting so much value from his mid and top ganks that uh, Samsung have really taken over in that area. And you see those ganks be rewarded with CS leads for the lanes as well. well there's no summoners in that bottom lane. And you guys spoke about uh, Yankos' impact. It's very difficult to gank the ultimate of Zyra as well. But is that where Yankos is looking, or does he have to help out Odo in the top lane to unlock that split push? Well, we talked about this in the pick and ban phase, how HK had to start putting more focus on trying to win bot lane and unleash Forgiven, basically. Gank towards mid lane. Yankos is here as well. It's going to be a 2v2 if a fight does happen. 
Watch the discipline there from Samsung, though. They don't want to chase into the dark side of the map. They know they don't have vision. They're not even going to go for that uh, possible 2v2 and chase him down. Meanwhile, uh, Kube will get back up to his turret in time to catch that wave that Odawane is pushing. It's a really good warding, bottom side. First Warden River spots Yankers, then they put a pink in the tri-bush, spots Yankers again, and he's simply not able to gank the bot lane without the flashes, and they're just playing super safe on bottom side, knowing that is where he's aiming, where he's going. Oh, so much damage onto Ryu. And now all of a sudden, here comes Ambition. Early flash comes out. Yankos, even though he connected the cocoon, the Ragnarok was up. That's a kill for Samsung Galaxy. Crown and Ambition running for their lives. They easily take apart Ryu. H2K were trying to set that up for so long with Ryu fading on that bottom side. And then Yankos coming around through the mid. But he took too much damage setting up the play so that Ambition, once again, gets such a high value. Only a couple seconds of his time. Pop the Ghost and Ultimate. And he's reward. Yeah, so he's trying to set this up. Takes a huge trade in exchange, and Ambition just runs straight through. Yeah, and Kobe, just before you talked about how Samsung didn't want to chase into the dark side of the map, which was the bottom side, Ryu was still standing towards that side because that was supposed to be the strong side of H2K where they had division control, and suddenly a random Olaf shows up from that side, surprising him. Now he's caught out, and just a really good setup again and execution from Samsung. All right, 10 minutes has gone by. H2K are down nearly 2,000 gold. They're down in CS in both top and mid lane. And this was a team composition, gentlemen, that you said should not fall behind early. Otherwise, it becomes so difficult to play from behind. They're going to lose tower first blood in the top lane. It looks like that will go down shortly. Yankos is trying to set up for a play in the bottom. Round Warp is coming as well. Yankos has gone a little bit early. Stranglethorns has already gone up. Yankos in trouble. True Shot Barrage not available, but not even needed. It's Core JJ that gets the kill. Ryu is going to donate another, this time to Ruler. And the tower is not even traded. Two kills, tower first blood. It's a 4,000 gold lead. Oh, and they're not done either. They can take control of the dragon area. Odo Omne under fire. Oh, Odo teleported in for this one, and crowd's going to run him down. Chaos Storm forces the flash. Odo wastes his summoner spells. Something we have seen before. When one team are down 0 2, they get very desperate when they try and make plays. They stick to camping the bottom side. Yankus goes in way too early because he knows Samsung already on the way down here to stop this play from happening. Simple means he pulls the trigger too early. He dies. The rest of his team goes down as well. They are 4,000 gold down 11 minutes in. It's another huge lead here for Samsung. And remember, they've only dropped a single game at this entire tournament. If they are able to close it out cleanly, I mean, that's as good as a ramp up to your match with SKT in the finals as yeah. you could hope for. They are looking quite good. They've been completing every single level without really having to do anything that was too hard for them, at least. Achievement unlocked. Achievement unlocked, but now the end boss is waiting for you very, very soon if they can finish this game. And it's looking very good for Samsung so far. Desperate moves from H2K as we've seen before, and it just does not pay off. It will be a 10-game win streak to get Samsung Galaxy into the title fight. But for H2K, they've shown some great games against teams who initially were anticipated to do much better. The problem for H2K is where they were strongest, their opponents today have been able to match them. Unlike all of the opponents leading up to this day. Yeah, exactly. The playstyle of H2K that was built around winning three lanes, simply not possible when you face a Korean powerhouse. Because that's one of the things I really like about like Samsung, Rox Tigers, SKT, is that they can match these teams from other regions individually, and then they can also outsmart them by just being much better late game and much better in terms of overall macro understanding. So they can really match everything you're doing, and it's what Samsung has been doing today. Yeah, Ambition even playing hyper forward. Stole that red buff away. Throws down the ghost and threatens um, a dive onto Odo. Odo Wombin now defending his inner turret top. H2K were able to secure a tower. So it's a small solace. It's a PK gold lead. Now they've got to defend mid lane. But I don't know if they've got the numbers for this. Samsung Galaxy, they're grouped up. Four men stacked in the mid lane. Starting to push up. Dubai's going to use the zoning keeper's verdict. Let's see if we can find a target. Poppy Copter does not lift off. And we'll get that cooldown back as the tower looks to fall. Uncontested, clean, clean play from Samsung. And the next step, very quickly taken by them, is to move up this vision line to both sides of the jungle. They go collect their extra gold off of bottom side here. At least a lot of the health as uh, Forgiven and Vander 
are positioning like they want to chase him off, but it's just a bit too late there. And Samsung collect all the outer turrets. And it's rough for H2K. I mean, not only this game where they're so far down, obviously going to be the last game for them if they don't manage to turn around and win. Because this tournament, like, they've been playing really well. If you look at group stage, if you look at top three quarter final against Albert Knox, but they didn't get to prove themselves against other teams, really. And a lot of guys were talking about, you know, deserving this. Oh, I'm just trying to trade in mid lane. He gets caught. We're going to trouble. Crown's low on mana. There's no chaos score. And Samsung Galaxy, I think the debate is still going to rage because this has been a pretty convincing series thus far. And we talk about, you know, Korean powerhouses, and you included them there, but they're only a very recent powerhouse. And that's what's so cool about this team, uh, their recent rise and how well they've been playing since the gauntlet, you know, and developing here at Worlds. And how this team, during the summer split, in regular season, they could beat the teams under them, but they couldn't beat the teams above them, except for one BO3 against the Rocks Tigers, where if you ask some of the LCK casters, they'd be like, that was Rocks Tigers playing really, really poorly. But Samsung just couldn't take down SKT and these other guys. Playoffs, it was the same. They dropped out. Get to face KT again, though, after losing so many games to KT in a row. And then they finally managed to beat them in a best of five with Core JJ. Plays really well early games, super snowball-y, fast-paced games. And now they show up here at Worlds. They still haven't proven themselves against SKT. But, I mean, who has really so far? Very, very few teams have been able to ever beat them. And that's going to probably be the next one for Samsung. Right. Be the toughest test yet. Um, does need to be cleanly closed out here. However, with a 5,000 gold lead at 15 minutes and the exceptional play that Samsung have shown throughout the mid to late game, it feels like an inevitability, does it not, gentlemen? It definitely looks frustrating here for H2K as the map sort of closes in on you in these situations. And they're trying to fight for those wards. You know, get the Scuttle Crab out there by the uh, Rift Herald and try and get some defensive vision in their jungle. But even that is such a tall task, and the vision's not even going to be enough. Well, Rift uh, Herald, yeah, is picked up. There's not seen a lot of focus around it, but this is going to be even more problematic for H2K because one of the keys to their composition was Odo Wamne eventually outscaling. Now he's got this buff to contend with against a champion who's already ahead with tower gold, with an assist. Got the crab. Well. It's such a tough situation for Odo, even more so now. Yeah, the thing about the Rift held so far in this tournament, we've only really seen it go down when one team was really far ahead in the early game. So it's almost a signal that this game is getting out of control completely. And uh, this is great now for, for the puppy, because even though it, even, the, even if you get out skill, it doesn't matter now. You're going to keep this even. And if you do lose, the rest of your team is going to win. All right, well, Odo's trading fairly well, actually. Still on top of that frozen earth of his. Throws down the ultimate, the subjugate. May actually be able to get a kill here. Kube's still alive. Throws down the Keeper's Verdict. That gets rid of Odo. Now he's fighting Banda. Will finally go down to Ryu. But the rest of Samsung Galaxy have moved up. So H2K, they get themselves a kill. But, I mean, that took, what, 35 seconds? to take him down. But now you have to try and then look for a play in the mid lane if you are H2K, because well, you're 4 5 to look for a play in the jungle. Ambition's got no Ragnarok. He was rooted in place. The rest of H2K cannot chase further. Forgiven used his heal and his ulti and wasn't able to push further. But that's a small reprieve from the pressure. They get a kill. They get a few waves of CS. And that's going to slow the game down at 18 minutes. I mean, that's what H2K needs to do. Exactly. Again and again and again to close this lead. The game was going way too quickly for them in Samsung's favor, and that's a very good first step back into the game. Uh, they're gonna have to make more on top of it and capitalize, but good pick there from H2K, able to get some gold in their pockets. Yep, Trinity Force picked up for Ruler. He finished off that man immune, did not go to Frozen first, which is what we were talking about earlier. But uh, the I mid game like has been accelerated. Build. Yeah, I like his build a lot, uh, honestly. Seems so weird to skip tier, tier early, but he got himself fairly quickly in this game and straight upgraded it as well. And he's just super strong on two items now. Holy Ooh. moly, that damage. That's All right, happens. when the enemy mid laner is pretty far ahead of the rest of your team, and you don't have any MR just yet. Oh, he doesn't. He's going to flash over the wall his ambition and run in with that Ragnarok. Trading some damage. Crown goes low, but there's no additional follow-up for H2K. 
Yeah, you can see the price you have to pay to try and even get vision in your own jungle right now. And that chunk onto, G onto Yankos and Ryu is going to mean the Drake over there to Samsung. Cloud Drake and Ocean Drake, so useful as well. At this stage of the game, get in between lanes, get the vision. Make sure you're always healthy for a fight. That seems to be the case for Samsung Galaxy. Ryu, oh. Ryu, Playmaker. Let's find out. Throws out the Overload. We'll get Rooster down in place and then locked down and then knocked up. Not going to find the kill. The plant blocked the Overload. And Crown survives with the help of Core JJ. I yeah, love the cleanse for Crown there. Cleanse into a sidestep to dodge the damage from Ryu. He stays alive. And HK again, they're just trying to take a few fights here and there. See if they can get maybe a kill. Slow down the game a little bit more. See Rio here, and look at her. Little moves from Crown as well. Good start, plan sidestep, and then the annoying plant in and your face. Those are kind of signature Ryu plays where he tries to create this fog of war, trap by himself to get back into it. You know, at, at this stage in the game, you, you don't fault people for, for trying to take super risky plays like that because they're so far behind. Uh, and they do need to make, you know, a bunch of those picks to work out. Right now, though, uh, Olaf does have his ultimate, so even if you do pick him off, probably just get the ulti out. The gold differences are, are terrifying. Ambition is up. So, Yankos, um, by around 1,800 gold. Uh, Crown is currently at 2,200 gold over Ryu. There's the numbers on your screen. Nearly 1,000 for Ruler. Nearly 1,000 for Core JJ. I mean, when you've got a 5k gold lead, yes, that is going to happen. But when you consider that lead was accrued by what, 16 minutes in game? Maybe even earlier. Maybe even earlier. It was incredible. So H2K still playing defensive. What's your uh, pa oh. what's, your, that a what's your power read say on Samsung right now? Because it's pretty hard to judge sort of the peak of this team since it is such a recent rise. Look at that AOE. Power. Chaos Storm sends H2K away. Samsung secured a 21 and a half minute Baron earlier this series. Do they risk it now? The answer does not seem to be yes. I mean, one of the things we were looking at, if we, uh, no. Thanks to Eric Kramp as well. We get more fights. We do indeed. What goes up must come down. Yankos drops down, flashes over the wall. Ryu takes a siphon power to the face, forced to run away. Death Ray comes out. Ambition connects with the Undertow, but there's no further follow-up. And Ryu still dancing on the edge of safety with this additional damage. Samsung enough peeled back to Baron. We'll have to answer your question in a moment or two, Kobe. No real support here from HK. There is a teleport from Moto 1 there, but he simply has got nowhere to go with it. And it's the same kind of play from Samson, where they make sure there's zero chance of HK getting a fight or a potential Baron steal. They force every single member away first, have proper vision down to see two pink wards behind the Baron, and then they take it super far ahead. I think the big question for me, you know, something I talked to Papa Smithy about before the game as well, was like Samsung late game with Core JJ. Was it the same level as Samsung late game with Wraith that we saw back in LCK during the summer split? And I think in this game here, or in this series, we've seen Samsung late game have fantastic shot calling again. Like, full understanding of when do we have power spikes, how are we going to win this game, how can the other team win the game, and how do we avoid any chance of them actually coming back? So I think they have shown really good late game, but there's such a big difference difference between the pressure H2K will provide compared to like SKT and that's where we're really gonna see the big test for Samsung when it comes to the late game. Well, they've been able to get multiple early Barons, they've played the side lanes well, they understood their team composition in game one, didn't run the risk of a Baron fight, Ambition is just quite literally going off he starts a 1v2, is able to zone away enough H2K members to allow a lot of damage. Now, Cuba has been run down. He's got Flash available. He's got Ultimate available. But while he's the target, the rest of Samsung are playing the top and the mid lane. Two towers simultaneously falling over just like dominoes. 23 minutes into the game as well. The complete control here, and the Baron buff is going to allow them to get into the inhibitor turrets as well. No pressure or defense from H2K. Round Warp is available. If Ryu can somehow get in behind Samsung Galaxy, Vanda forced to run away while the pressure's in the top lane. Cubase opening up yet another tower. That's the seventh of the game falling in the bottom lane. Ryu's chunk low. 
Gravity Field comes out. Jankos is locked down in place. Stranglethorns not going to knock him up because he's already dead. The inhibitor's the focus. H2K have got no reply, have got no answer, and it feels like they've got no chance. H2K now 4v5 have to defend. Ruler's going to get knocked aside the pillar of ice. But look at this. Every <laughs> single lane is under pressure. Ruler's going to sidestep away. Finally goes down. Ryu gets a kill, but it doesn't feel like it matters. The inhibitor's now the focus. The rest of Samsung realize they've got to back away ever so slightly unless they can get some CC. Ambitions on the front line with Ragnarok available. Ryu still with Realm War, but it will not matter. All Samsung was looking for was the inhibitors get the super minions in. It's still hard to finish the game, you know, this early on with double Nexus turrets alive. So you want the super minions with you. Sadly for Samsung, small, small loss. <laughs> they only got one in here. Boo hoo hoo. I'm sure they're still very, very happy. And Korean problems. <laughs> didn't get two, only got one. So we'll only have super minions coming from one lane. But they can go back in now, pick up that Infernal Drake, go back into the base of H2K and look to do exactly the same play. Yeah, I mean, pick up Infernal Drake on your way there, add a little bit of extra damage. So boost up those recent purchases they were able to make. And I think it's tough, again, to be H2K. We tried to touch on this earlier, but then we had a lot of action going on. Like, they really wanted to show something against Sam. They wanted to show, hey, being the top board worlds, it is legit. It's not just, as some people were saying, an easy route here. I still think H2K can look at this tournament and be very, very happy. Because if you look at the entire run, the other playoff teams, the second seeds, I think RNG was the only one who could really give them a run for their money. So no matter who they would have drawn to kind of prove, yes, we are good enough to be in the top four, I think they could have made it all the way here, no matter who they got from that second seed. Sadly for them, they didn't get to show more against Samsung. Uh, unfortunately not. The early game strength has been thwarted. The Gibbon's going to sidestep some of that damage. Crown throws down the flash, the cleanse. H2K are pushed all the way back. Their last inhibitors are the focus as Odo is trying to dance with Cubey, but he simply hasn't got the feet to handle it. Odo goes down. The inhibitor follows as well. Samsung will take another immediately after. And this soup is pouring in from the top lane. It's 25 minutes into game time, and Samsung Galaxy are setting their sights on the Nexus turrets. Ways clear from Forgiven is going to be put into question. Strangle for by some time. Yankos looks to at least get a kill back. This might slow things down, but it's at the cost of Ryu's life. H2K are running for their lives. Forgiven's trying to do what he can, but Rule and Ambition trying to put the damage down and flash away defensively. The Nexus turret is falling under pressure. Cube left untouched. H2K, they cannot leave their fountain. H2K, they will be going home. And there's nothing that they can do. A 3-0 sweep of Europe's H2K will send Samsung Galaxy to the World Final! And we just gotta take the hat off for Samsung here. I mean, they were far and away the best team today. I think especially we should look at Game 1 and Game 2 where H2K tried their best, but Samsung were able to match them early on and then, of course, beat them in the mid to late game. Last game here is where you just try something. You're desperate. You go for every single play you can. Backfires very early, and then the game snowballs out of control. Definitely agree. And there were moments where H2K were able to pull out some big plays. Yankos in, in the jungle early had a lot of moments where he shined through. Uh, they were able to have a couple of collapses there. But honestly, what this does mainly is build up that story for Samsung headed towards SKT. Definitely the underdogs, but really where is their peak? After only dropping a single game in this tournament, you know, they've been just rising and rising and rising. I'm gonna go back to the question you asked about 10 minutes ago, Kobe. <laughs> what is the power level of Samsung Galaxy? Where are they truly? Madison Square Garden, Samsung Galaxy advanced to the world final to face off against SK Telecom T1. Individually, it feels like every single member of this team has provided phenomenal performances throughout the majority of the group stage. Yeah, and I think after a lot of people saw week two and how Samsung, even Rox, and of course SKT were playing, I think a lot of people were actually expecting a career versus career final because these teams are just looking so good and no other team have been able to challenge really any of them, especially not in BO5s. So we've seen a few one-offs and best-of-ones, but as soon as we got into playoffs, 
LPL couldn't challenge them. Europe couldn't challenge. NA couldn't challenge. No one could really do anything against these three powerhouses from Korea, and that's why we now get SKT versus Samsung in the final. We're going to have a, another series to talk about the Samsung story. But for H2K, they still showed up. When you look at the European LCS as a whole, H2K, the underdogs. Um, there was some expectation maybe they can make it up more so than Splice, despite uh, you know, not having the greatest end to the summer split. But it's just a sour taste to end what was actually a fairly positive World Championship. Exactly. I saw some of the tweets from some of the players before the game. So like, we want to go in here, we want to show how good we can be. We had Forgiven talk about it in one of the interviews. You know, the highs of HRK are really high. The lows can be fairly low. I don't think they underperformed in Game 1 or Game 2 at all. I actually think they, they were very competitive. Problem for them, Samsung could just match them again, as we talked about again and again. Individually, Samsung can match every single player. And then Samsung is just a better team as well and much smarter about how to play the game later on. And then it's really difficult if you are a team who relies on winning that early game to get your big advantage. I think HUK can definitely be proud of getting to this point. I mean, their expectations for them were nowhere near semifinals, and they definitely weren't able to show up on that stage. Yeah, they really did. It is uh, unfortunate to see that in game three, they really got crushed. But as you mentioned, Deficio, game one and two, the early games, some of the outplays, uh, and then just the big questions, you know, what happened to Ryu today? Because he was not the Ryu from last week or from you know, uh, week two in San Francisco. No, definitely not. Uh, he looked so good before this. Can look at Crown, give him a lot of credit for that one. He's obviously a fantastic mid laner. He's played better than some of the other guys Rio has played against so far in the tournament, and we saw that. Can Crown step up against Faker next <laughs> week? <laughs> Can definitely anyone? Definitely waiting to see that. I'm super excited now for this finals uh, to see the clash, because a lot of people thought, you know, only Rox would be able to challenge SKT. And now we get a chance, uh, you know, at Samsung trying their hand. I mean, that was a Korea versus Korea semifinal that went to five games. The storyline of, of Blank and Bengi is going to be talked about for a long time. Now you're going to add ambition into there. A jungler with arguably even more story than these guys. How does ambition match up? Kobe. I, <laughs> I mean, guys. if you're, yeah, exactly. You're matching, you know, the Bengi story of the veteran coming back in with Ambition, who's been playing since 2012, and switching years, roles, years. trying the so hard. The best player to never make worlds, and now he's in a world final. Whew. And he's been able to mold this entire team, right? You, you talked about it a little bit during the cast with the shot calling of him coming in, uh, and that very much is in Korean culture with the elder on yeah. the team, demanding a lot of respect as well. Yeah, I think that's a really cool part, of, you know, with the shot calling, making them a super strong late game team, but also just individual performance from Ambition. Like, he wasn't always a jungler, he was a mid laner who turned into Especially a Especially that play. third game, part of the reason it was yeah. such a smash. I mean, we've seen this all tournament long. I feel like I can re remember, like, one really bad game he had against TSM very early on. There we go, we got to add it into the cast. Um, <laughs> and then we just had basically a perfect performance from Ambition ever since. And, and that's something that really stands out to me, that a guy like him can show up big time now. He was great, obviously in the summer split from Samsung. And many of these members are stepping up big time. Was it a mistake to not ban Victor? Was Victor part of the reason? Oh, I mean, Ryu didn't play well, but like, mm. would that have made any difference? Crown's rise is also incredibly impressive. So like, you have to do some other things, pick it away, you know, first pick if you aren't going to. And I think you should have banned it. I don't think you would have won. No, it wouldn't have made a difference, probably, is what it boiled down to. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for the insight and thank you for the cast. For now, we're going to head down to Shocks for a post-game discussion with Samsung Star.